Hi everyone, it's Karen here with a silhouette style birthday card using Find It Trading Wild Animal Dye and Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Inks. Enjoy! All the product links are listed below in the description area, including this amazing dye set from Find It Trading. I made this card to celebrate World Card Making Day, which is tomorrow, October 7th, 2017. And there's a lot of really good deals going on in many different stores and they're all linked below in the description area. To create the African sunset background, I used some Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper and four Distress Oxide ink colors. I used Wilted Violet, Abandoned Coral, Spice Marmalade, and Wild Honey and I started blending them with my blending tool on the background. I started with the top, which is the purple, and rubbed it back and forth. Then I took the second color, which is the abandoned coral, and added it on top of a little bit of the purple and then underneath. And then I went back with my wilted violet and blended everything together. And I kept on doing this with all the colors. So I went with a spice marmalade next, and I added it underneath the abandoned coral and then blending it in between. Then I went with the wild honey at the bottom and used the spice marmalade to blend it in between. So it really blended all the colors together and I went back and forth until I was happy with the blending. The good thing about Distress Oxide inks is that they blend beautifully and it really comes out good. And you see I'm using that tool to hold it because when I put my fingers it leaves finger marks because of uh, the heat on my fingers. Now I wanted to create a nice background with one of them. So all I did is I took my Tim Holtz Distress Spray bottle and just added it to the background and then taking a paper towel I just pressed it on top and that removed some of the ink of course from the Distress Oxiding. This is a great technique. If you haven't seen it before you can see some of my other videos with the Distress Oxide inks and how I do this and I have many more techniques that way and the link is above so you can see it. I heat set both backgrounds and set them aside so I could work with the rest of the card. I took some black cardstock and the Sizzix dotted frame from Stephanie Bernard and basically using some Macrosport tape I put it in the place where I wanted it and then run it through my Sizzix machine, the Big Shot, so I could create a window because I really wanted to create that beautiful window where you could see the African landscape. And I did this to two different pieces of cardstock so I would have two cards. Then I took my stamp platform and a Stampendous Sentiment stamp and I used it to stamp happy birthday. I used my anti-static tool to make sure that nothing sticks to the background and then I stamped my happy birthday onto the large area on my black cardstock. Then I took some Ranger Super Fine Embossing Powder and embossed both cards because I stamped it in both and it was really easy to do it with a stamp platform because I could do them both at once. I added the white embossing powder which is in my container so I can easily add right on top of it and it's a great way to store your embossing powders. Then I brushed off any excess powder that I didn't need that had gone on the other areas and then I heat set it with my heat tool. To create that window effect in my card, I needed the black cardstock to be 3D. So I took some fun foam and basically glued it to the background. Now I only had purple fun foam and it would have been better if I had black fun foam, but I didn't. So I just used the purple and I used some soft matte gel medium to basically glue it to the background. The reason why I glued it first before cutting the frame in the back is because I wanted to make sure that everything is lined up. So I did this for both cards and as you can see I'm using my Prima Finabare silicone brush which is really easy because you can apply things easily to the background and it's really smooth. And here I am applying the second one to the second card. 
Then I took something heavy and put it on top of both cards to make sure that they flatten out and let the gel dry. Once it was dry, I took the Sizzix rectangle dotted die again and cut out the purple from the middle. And I used this with the other rectangle that I had cut out with the black cardstock and glued that black cardstock to this leftover piece of fun foam because I wanted to use these to cut the animals. These cool animal dies are from a new company I recently discovered while teaching a class in a local store. It's from a company called Find It Trading and this is the die set Wild Animals and it has a beautiful tree and some really beautiful African animals and I didn't use all of them because I just didn't have room in my card but I'm looking to do another card one day which is a little bit longer so I could fit all the animals on it and I was really impressed by all the amazing dyes this company has and I'm linking below the link to you for you to be able to purchase this die if you want to and all I did is just basically run the black cardstock with the fun foam through my Sizzix machine so and cut all of them for both cards. And they turned out really beautiful and it looks like silhouette animals and it was really easy to just add them to my card and they were basically had that 3D effect because I had the fun foam behind it. A cool trick that uh, my friend Susan taught me is to use a little bit of a black sharpie or a black marker and if you don't have the right color fun foam you could color the edges with the sharpie and basically hide everything especially if it's black however I realized that I actually really like the purple and I ended up leaving it purple oh, I only did a few of them just to show you the effect but I ended up leaving it all purple because I used purple note cards for the background now I took my art glitter glue and put the frame upside down and then glued the background. That way I could line it up perfectly. And I did this to both cards and used something heavy to flatten them out until the glue was dry. Then I glued the frame background to my square note card and this square note card is five and three quarters by five and three quarters so there is an eighth of an inch on each side and I ended up picking a purple cardstock because it matched the sky perfectly. I love this glue because it really dries clear and doesn't show any mistakes when I use it. The last step was to glue the tree and the animals inside the window frame and I made sure that the animals are all touching the bottom of the frame as if it's the floor of the African savanna, obviously except for the bird which is flying in the air. And I used the same glue as before because it dries clear and I was able to basically hold everything together. I did put something flat again on top of it just to make sure everything glues really well. One of the things I realized about myself when I've made the cards and in the past few videos where I've actually made a lot of mistakes, I realized that I'm not a perfectionist and that I don't mind and some of the cards don't look perfect. I don't go back and redo them and you can see some small imperfections in the frame and in the lines and there's some white on that black background and that's okay and I'm okay with it and I just like the imperfections are part of me and part of how I create. I'm not making these cards to sell. I'm just making them to send to people like my family and friends and that's why it's okay if they're imperfect and it doesn't really matter as long as you're happy with the results. And of course if you want them to be perfect it's okay as well. Just go ahead and remake them. That's not a problem. Anything goes. Thank you so much for watching. For more inspiration subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. Bye!